Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds Bar Nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Ryan, and today I'm joined by the contingent. I'm Ted. I'm Nate. And I'm Dave. So uh, today we're going to talk about PVP, the delightful comic book by web comic by Scott Kurtz, uh, <laughs> PVPOnline.com. No, so player versus player in your tabletop role playing games. Um, this is sort of a, a player tips of, well, I mean, if you're going to do PVP, you know, how how do you do that with now? tearing your table apart you know how do you do it in a way that kind of can be diplomatic and you can walk away as friends still from the gaming table well there's, there's a couple different ways that you know player on player action happens number oh, one hot. player <laughs> on player action sometimes oh, it's, it's from behind or missionary there's all kinds of ways you can take them like there, there, are there, are, there are times that you're you as the the, the player you make a, a choice to say i'm going to play a character who's against the actions of the party, and you know, you're kind of lying in wait. Adversary, you know, yeah. you know, you're lying in wait to eventually turn on them at, at just just the right time. There, there's times that you know players are, you know, you know, a discussion comes up, you know, a heated argument happens, and you guys decide to to draw draw steel and fight or draw you know sword and wand, whatever have you. Um, there's other times that you know a DM effect happens and. You know, you're turned against your your party, not through your own choice. So th those are the situations as I see it. Did I miss anything? Uh, no, that's pretty much you know, that pretty much works. You know, the the one describes like more like the plant character that the DM puts into the bar, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which and, are great fun to play. Yeah. So I don't really even really see that as P P P player versus player because most of the time it doesn't actually come up until the very end, the, like yeah. the last scene, right. the, the yeah, the, the the climax of the action happening. The uh, the into the astral game with the uh, SR2 Joker Andrew Knapp was really there was some really good player versus player action in that one. It was not hot because they're Gith Yankee and they just kind they're of kind like, of bony. That, 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 that not one, my type. Not my type. That one was pl you know player choice. You know they, they they chose going going into it that you know conflict you know could or would happen. Which with with an evil party or evil characters, it makes more sense for that to, to occur. Yeah. But that was actually one of the smoothest uh, games with that going on that I've seen. Because most of the time when it happens, like when when it happens at your table, and you know, players start doing this. You know, players are horrible at separating their characters from themselves. Right, right. It just, just as a general rule of thumb. And so, for the most part, when this happens, whoever comes out on the bottom, whoever loses, is going to be probably sore about it. And the next thing you know, their next character is designed to beat the character that killed them. To, to kill the guy. And, and it, it just creates this and escalation. It's, it's an arms yeah. race. Um, now, so I, I want to say that you know, if for whatever reason, you know, either of I, any of those three reasons, if somebody kills your character, you know, a player kills your character, just get over it and move on. You know, sw swallow it down, and have your next character just be something fun. And you know, if if you want to make it nice and easy transition, be something that's neutral, someone that's just going to go along with the flow and not cause a fuss and. Let that's this will keep your party, you know, happy and not thinking. Okay, well, what what's his next plan? What is he gonna do to get well, Bob back? Well, not only that though, you could do a thing with uh, as far as role playing. Well, a the person that in the conflict, like not all fights are to the death. You right. know? Like you could be you could be dealing subdual or like you know like you could just take somebody to within an inch of their life if, right. it, if the impetus to do to have this conflict was that severe uh -huh. and then like it becomes a thing like the the other character who lost now has this motivation to like work harder to be able to best this person uh -huh. and at some point like you know not it depends on the character like if they're really underhanded then they might try, try to take out the other character but if they're like an honorable warrior or swordsman or whatever it's like I'm going to get good enough to be able to best you sort uh -huh. of thing yeah. I, f I feel like the problem is most of the time when this happens, it's the heat of the moment, mm -hmm. and people aren't thinking clearly, right. and, and they're not making good decisions as players for their characters, mm -hmm. because instead of, like you said, being, okay, this doesn't have to end in player death, it could be, you know, submission, it, you know, it could be, you know, subduing them, you could, do, you know, these are, there's these other options to not, like, totally destroy the party, Yet that's not what happens. Yeah, you know, well, hand, handful of sessions ago, you know, you, you and the druid, um, you know, you were you were close to button heads. You know, I, I actually think spells were cast. We did. You know, and well, and it, it was close. And I'm like, all right, how is this gonna end here? And you know, another player stepped in and 
knocked the guy out. You know, it's like, all right, we're good here. <laughs> So yeah, like that's... although do note that this person has not been to act to our gaming table yeah, since, yeah. so well, not... maybe it did, maybe it didn't work out. But no, I mean in that situation, like you know he was going to murder you know an NPC. My character didn't want him to, so you know he was concentrating on a spell. So my objective was actually just to keep him from concentrating on the spell. Right. It wasn't actually to harm him or do anything. And matter of fact, I would have used the subdual rules at right. that point. And that's actually what you know. Uh, what Scott did when he beat him upside the head with the staff. <laughs> so, yeah, so th there are alternatives that you can do, but again, like, what are the ram long what are going to be the what are the long-standing ramifications going to be? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, that's the other problem. Like when these things arise, like a lot of times people want to play this game, like there's no consequences to their actions. They just yeah, do whatever they exactly. want. Mm -hmm. Like you can't. You know, and I've had this discussion in the comments with other people. Well, you know, the DM shouldn't throw challenges at me that are out of out of my league just because I do evil acts. No, he should absolutely do that. Eventually, if your acts are evil enough, yeah, the twenty level paladin should come and smite you mm -hmm. and possibly kill you. It's not. It's not my. You know, the whole idea that it's your job as the DM to give them challenges that that they're they're adequately equipped to handle. No, don't act like an asshole in the game. So that your DM doesn't have to make make these real life consequences happen to your character. When you when you create a character and play them in such a way that you end up being a boss in some other adventuring party's hook mm. adventure, you know there's a problem because eventually someone's going to come along and they're going to murder you. Yeah, they're going to defeat you. You know, like, like there's a kill, reason. Kill the bad guy and take his stuff. Yeah, let's yeah. kill that bad guy and take his magic sword. Yeah. Well, I mean, also too, and like, make sure he can't be resurrected. Most evil characters in any fiction aren't so like overwhelmingly overt. They're usually ve working their machinations very subtly, and it's not until that they've gotten to their end phase, their end game, then they've won that they reveal that they are the dark Sith Lord or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. so. You know, if you're going to be evil, you like don't be overt about it. You got to be subtle. Yeah. You know? Well, and that's the other thing, another part of party conflict, player versus player, that comes up is when you do have that one player that thinks he's going to play the game that way. Like, if you're, if you're in a group that are playing as heroes and your idea is, I'm going to murder everybody, well, you should think that, yeah, there's pro this is probably going to create conflict between you and the other players. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's just unrealistic to say not. Like, could, like sometimes people just have to go, go, okay, this is the game, but how would this affect people if I did it in real life? It would probably make them unhappy. Maybe I shouldn't do it. And yeah. if two of the people fight in the party, the party might just dissolve. Because if, let's say it's a whole bunch of good guys and then this one evil guy, and he beats and defeats one of the guys that had basically stood up and had a problem with his actions, and he beats him. Well, with the other three guys that weren't upright enough or courageous enough to actually get in this guy's face about what he's been doing, hang around that guy anymore, I wouldn't. I'd be like, I should get someplace else before I can't stand him and I have to fight against him. Because I don't think I'm going to win. But so I'm just going to leave. Basically, if there's a character that's so disruptive to party harmony, like you should write that character out of the uh, out of the story like they leave they become they come back as a villain or whatever but like i mean that one player like sorry you have to relinquish your character and make something that's going to function better with the right. party you know and like it, it's fine you they they'll meet somebody else on the road or however they're going to come into the game but yeah that one person hand over your character sheet and it's an npc now so the, the other side of, of the player versus player situation is when the DM, you know, kind of takes control of your character through, you know, possession or magic or Or, or a doppelganger happened. effect. You know, so, yeah. so you know, what, what is your guys, you know, take on, on that? You know? I, I think there's never a problem with this one, and this one can be fun, especially if you, if you include the player in it. Mm -hmm. And be like, look, this is what's going on. Here's what we're going to do. It. Here's a chance for you to play your character in a way maybe you normally wouldn't. And, and that could be a good time. And once it all comes out and is revealed, like, you know, I, I think that's the, you're the least likely to have any hard feelings between the players. No, I, I, I've had times where, you know, the DM has controlled my characters. And, and by that, I mean, you know, you know, possession and it's told, okay, just it is do, nine tenths of the law. Ju you know? ju yeah. <laughs> just do this. And, you know, you're looking to, to, to harm the players. And in the past, I've always done a lackluster job. I've always like said, okay, well, you know, I have to attack the party. I have to do this. But just this past Monday night, I was in a game 
I'm, I'm playing, you know, an assassin. Like, you know, he's a hunter. You know, he's a ranger rogue. And, you know, we're walking through this forest. I'm scouting. And, you know, I fail a wisdom roll. And, you know, the, the DM, she pulls me aside and says, you know, look, you know, you've been possessed. Essentially, you know, the entity of the forest re can read your character sheet. You have to use everything you possibly can to bring down your target. And... Like, I, I legitimately felt bad after the combat that I had forgotten to use my Hunter's Mark. You know, and it's like, you know, I literally was rolling, you know, 14 or 16 dice of, of you know, of damage against the, the, the Paladin to, to, to bring him down. You know, and it was, it was crazy. And, you know, three, four rounds, you know, of combat happen and, you know, we're, we're subdued and we move on. And now there's cool role playing of like, okay, now I feel like I owe something to this paladin because I like a new kidney. <laughs> <laughs> because I literally, you know, drew my bow on him and tried to slay him, you know. And it was it was really cool, and it actually invoked role playing. And while you know the the one paladin was totally dropped and the second paladin was nearly dropped. Um, You're doing a pretty good job of taking out paladins. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was uh, uh, the assassin and the barbarian. This is your favorite enemy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was the uh, assassin and the barbarian who wound up, uh, you know, failing their wisdom rolls. And if, uh, you know, the other party member hadn't chosen his spells wisely, we totally could have slew, slew the entire party. It, I, it just wanna, I just want to say, Ted, on behalf of Scott, Scott Garraby, congratulations on... Uh, on uh, graduating from Dungeons and Doilies up to Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> because so, your party's uh, hit points are a resource. Are a resource for you to use. So it, it was cool, and you know the, the the DM was worried when she was dealing with the situation and saw what the first round of combat looked like. It's like, oh my god, what have I done? Mm. <laughs> uh, but it was it was it was cool, and there was no death. You know, we depleted some hit points. You know, people wound up casting some healing spells because five sixths of the party has access to healing magic. The sixth member actually had healing potions on him, so we were fine and we moved on and we, you know, we got through, you know, the evening's adventure without a problem. Your oath most stinks right now. But... Well, I mean that that was that was the thing that you know actually more of the party was worried about than I was. You know, my my ranger rogue does have an oath bow. I used the swift death death to my enemies to get an extra six dice of damage on my crit to the. To and it was also the first time you've ever used the ability on one of your part. Now, no, no, it was the first time you used that ability, which happened to be on a party member. member. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, That's like, you know, brilliant. like, I, I, throughout the rest of the night, no, I, I, I kind of, you know, fought against the urge to draw on my, uh, my adversary or my, my ally because my bow thinks he's the bad guy. You know, mm. I kind of <laughs> let it have a little bit of sentience. That's yeah. funny. Like, every time you go to shoot, like, you, you draw your beat across them first and then to the enemy. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it's, it's kind of cool to, to, to go through that. And the, the DM, like, she was even more, more concerned about it. I'm like, look, we went through the whole first, first session and I didn't use that aspect. It's the only magical bow in the game. Mm. So that's the one I chose. I'm not super fond of it. If, it. if it wasn't for my character's background having a revenge kick, it wouldn't be apropos at all. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know what? When I can take down Ryla or whatever it was as a bad guy, yeah, I'll make sure that I use it on him. Anybody else, I really don't care about. Unless they happen to be the party. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was that was because unless an entity tells you to kill them. the entity, I was told the the entity, you know, says to use everything on your character sheet to the best of your ability. So I'm like, you know what? Fine, Shh. Nice. done. Yeah. So <coughs> PVT, PVP, you have to separate the the character actions and the pl like players at the game. Your your people playing a fucking game, like by yeah. and large. So. There, that's a thing to always sort of take into consideration. Player maturity. It requires yeah. player, player maturity in order to pull it off well. Otherwise, there's going to be bad feelings. And if you are in that situation, then don't do it. It's not worth... It's not worth the extra aggravation to the other players, to the DM, and to yourself, really. Yeah, yeah. And, and and you know, if if these other guys have had had an issue, if a character had legitimately died, you know, it's like, well, holy crap, how's that? How is that gonna gonna look? And you know, I don't it, even count that though. That's that's getting killed by a monster, in my opinion. Hmm. Yeah, it, it may have well, used yeah, you in, as the in weapon that, in that situation. Yeah. Yes, you know, but if you're if you're 
consciously making the choice to say, you know what, I want to, you know, kill a fellow player because of, you know, X, Y, and Z reason, um, you know, you have to not only deal with the in-game repercussions, but how your fellow players are going to take it, and, you know, is it worth, you know, possibly messing up a gaming group or a friendship? It should be a thing of last resort that's, like, vital to the story, the character arc. Like, it's, like, so important to the character. Or, you know, you're, if your character hates the party that much, or a specific member in the party, and he's not that attached to them, again, you could just leave. That right. character could just leave, and you could create something that's going to be more ho- harmonious with the rest of the party. Indeed. So, I don't know. I think we've pretty much pvp PvP'd this one to death. So... So guys, in the comments below, how, you know, share your war stories from player versus player in your campaigns, your thoughts on it, why you're at it, like, subscribe, and share. You can uh, check out Nerdarchy the store and get some sweet Nerdarchy swag. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, at yes. Nerdarchy. You can also patronize us on a good way over on Patreon. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.